Hey, welcome back. Look, it's nice to have you back here again. Now let's talk about, well, Namekians. How strong are Namekians? Or better yet, how strong can a Namekian become? Okay, now let's create an alternate universe. And in that alternate universe, there's a Namekian named Picole. Yeah, Picole, whatever. N name is whatever, okay? That's his name. Picole. And in this universe, Picole meets Goku and Vegeta and he's inspired by them, like insanely inspired. And he wants to be like them, so he spends the rest of his days training, day in, day out. Can he become as strong as they've become? Here's another question, can he beat someone like Beerus? And then you know what I thought? Why don't I do the experiment myself? I was like, well, how would I do that? My voice cracked? Nice. I asked myself, how would I do that? Then I was like, well, the only way I can do it is Dragon Block C. So yeah, there you go. And what better way to do it than a 100 days video or specifically 100 days as a Namekian. My goals in this video to beat Beerus. That's that's my main goal. I want to beat Beerus. And my second goal is to hopefully get further than that. But if I can beat Beerus, this 100 days as a Namekian will be a success. And listen, if at any second, at any moment, you think, wow, this video is nuts. I'm enjoying it so much. I invite you to hit the subscribe button. We're trying to hit 100,000 senshi by the end of the year. So I would really appreciate it if you just give that red button a click. And look, if you stick around, you will have an amazing time. Because I always do my best to ensure that. Now, what do you say we just, we just start this thing? Also, in the description, I've linked our Discord and my socials. So if you want to come over to my Instagram or Twitter and say hi and leave a follow while you're there, I'll do my best to reply to as many of you as possible. Okay, uh, back to the, the thing. The first thing was obviously the character customization, and I obviously chose Namekian. But you know what I did? I gave my Namekian boy one blue eye. You know, just because he has one blue eye now. Okay, that's, yeah. And then it was time to set up base and properly start this 100 days. First day, collected wood for my base, you know, as one does. And then I cleared a bunch of this grass to make some space for my base. And then you know what I did next? I just punched a bunch of these pigs because a guy like me gets so hungry. Even though I'm a Namekian, I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to eat water or something like that. But yeah, whatever. And then you know what happened? By the night time, I had nothing to show for my hard work. Yeah, there was no base. Do you see a base here? Me neither. But hey, you know what? Whatever. Because by day two, I had something better than what I had on day one. It was just a bunch of wood pillars, but you know what? It's a start. Also, I had no plan for this base. I was just kind of freestyling it, hoping that I might end up with a good product. By the end of day three, I got really bored of working on my base. I was like, hey, on day four, why don't I go see my favorite person, Corin? Because I had done zero training up till that point, I decided I would, you know, pun some cows to get some training points. I wouldn't get that many, but hey, it's better than nothing. And then with those training points, I made my first move, a barrage. And I called it the TP barrage because this was a great way of getting training points. So it didn't do that much damage, but Hey, at least I would get a lot more training points this way. Because I didn't have my flight ability yet, I had to climb up to Corin's tower like a madman. I hated climbing so much, in fact, I was like, hey, Corin, my guy, teach me how to fly. Look, I could fly now. This was really great. Not only was this much faster than walking, but it just looks cool. I had some training points left over, so I used those to upgrade constitution. And then I used my TP barrage on the spider and then on day five, I just punched the saber tooth. I used the training points that I had collected to upgrade my strength because I really wasn't trying to die from the Cybermen. And then this creeper ruined my backyard. See that there's a hole there now. I decided maybe it was time to get potential unlock. So I headed up to the tower, went to my guy Kami and guess what he said? He said, no, I didn't have enough mind. So I couldn't unlock potential unlock. Kind of sucks, but I don't think I'm going to need it for the early parts of the saga. And then I went over to Piccolo to get some training weight. Not for training, but just because it looked so cool. I mean, look at this cape, bruh. You, you, look at it. It slows me down, but it's worth it. Remember when I said I get hungry? Well, that happened. I had to go out and look for some dinosaur meat. But as you guessed, I found zero dinosaurs. I did find the saber tooth though, but it doesn't give any source of food. So it's just kind of... It's useless, if I can put it like that. It's, it's useless. Thanks for nothing, you 
saber tooth. But it's like the saying goes, if there's no dinosaur meat, there's usually a cow in about 5 feet. And remember the base? Yeah, I decided to actually start trying to finish that off. And then, fight time. And I'll be honest, I forgot just how many Cybermen spawn when you do this. So, you know what I did? I decided to, you know, apply some strategic tactics and try and move to higher ground. Not because I was scared, okay? It's not because I was scared that there were so many Cybermen. I, this is a strategy, okay? Because look how effective it is. It was also while doing this that I very quickly realized that if I didn't get up to this higher ground, I probably would have died to the Cybermen. So, yeah, there's that. And I'm not gonna lie, while fighting these last two, I was preparing a speech once I had died. Because this was- I was dead here. I don't know how I survived this. But you know what they say, if you fight Cybermen at night, then you might just put up a fight. <laughs> I'm making these up right now. I used those training points to upgrade myself and then I was like, eh, it's day 7. I'm feeling like I should finish off the base. And that's what I worked on for the whole day. And you know what? By the end of the day, the base was fully finished. It took long enough. I did a bit of training on day 8 and I finally unlocked potential unlock. And that does literally exactly what it says. When you upgrade it, you just unlock your full potential. And I've been in my underwear since the beginning of this whole thing, so on day 9 I decided maybe it was time to get some armor. And so I did the natural thing, I went to go mining, and I found none of the ores that I needed to make the armor that I wanted. Just a bunch of iron and coal. But you know what, that was okay because the next best thing was building a training room. Now, I tried to replicate the training room that I had in the first Dragon Block C video, and I won't go too much into detail, but basically, you make the room so small that the shadow dummies can't register any damage to you. The only problem with this is that the shadow dummies change size now. Who- who ca- who- they change size now. I- I don't know if I- Whenever they teleport to you, they get smaller. So, yeah, that was just not gonna work. I had to train the old-fashioned way. On day 11, I had to start preparing for my Raditz fight. Raditz is the weakest Saiyan, but I still don't want to slack off when I'm fighting him. So, what better way to prepare, I thought to myself, than to unlock Key Sense. This is useful because I can actually see how much health he has while I'm fighting him and I don't have to guess. The next day, I found some of that ore that I was looking for while searching for some dinosaur meat. So, now not only would I have some armor, but I would also have some dinosaur meat to heal up. And also, of course, of course I created the maximum wave. The it, it is by far the strongest attack. I created the maximum wave back at the first Dragon Block C video, and before anyone says, dude, why don't you get the Kamehameha? The maximum wave trumps the Kamehameha any day. Believe me, I've tested. The Kamehameha does not come close to the maximum wave. Then, on day 13, it was time to fight man like Raditz. <laughs> what did I say man like Raditz? <laughs> Anyway, it's fight time. Well, before that, I should probably get a sensu bean. Okay, now we can go fight. Yeah, Raditz, it's quite difficult when you're not as strong as me, isn't it? I'm gonna take a... Nah, I won't take the sensu bean. Alright, I'll take the sensu bean just for luck. I forgot to lock onto him, but this should hit. This should hit him. And that is why the maximum wave is my absolute favorite move. That is why. Okay, so the Raditz fight was expectedly easy, but my next fight wouldn't be. Well, no, actually it would. I was just fighting a bunch of Cybermen. But the fight after that would be Vegeta and Nappa. So this is a good warm-up, I think. You guys want to fight in the water? Let's, let's do this. Let's go. Look at them. There's so many. All right, come on. Let's just finish this. Well, yeah, I've made a lot of progress compared to last time. I do not remember this being so easy. Okay, so I didn't want to go straight into the Vegeta and Nappa fights and just get my neck bent. So for day 14, I decided I should probably prepare. So I collected some dinosaur meat and did some training. I also changed the config so Corin doesn't just give you one sensu bean, but instead he gives you a bag of sensu beans. So yeah, he gives five sensu beans now. All the training I was doing was so that I could unlock 
or upgrade my potential unlock. So, you know, I could charge up a little bit more and release more of my potential. I also upgraded constitution and strength because I probably still want to do a lot of damage. And as always, my guy Corin supplied the sensu beans and then it was time to fight Vegeta and Nappa. Here's the thing with fighting Vegeta and Nappa. You fight them both at the same time, so this is not going to be an easy fight. Okay, okay, let's start with Nappa. I'm gonna pop a sensu bean just for some luck. Nappa, you... Vegeta? Wait, okay. <laughs> Give me a second. Oh, shh. Okay, 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 okay. Fine, I'll hurry it up. Okay, you're a busy guy, I know. Guy has places to be. I need to hurry this up. Alright, target lock. Vegeta? Try this. For size or something, yeah. Ooh, he blocked it with the... Okay, okay, I see. Oh shoot, I stopped flying? Why did I stop flying? Holy, okay Vegeta. Okay Vegeta, okay. Let's try the max wave again. Alright Vegeta, have, have this, have this. Have this, it tastes pretty good I've heard. Eh, it did okay damage to him. I'm just gonna punch you now Vegeta. Like, I'm just... Like, I'm being real with you. I'm actually just gonna walk to your face and just punch you, my guy. Alright, let's relax. We're kind of destroying the biome here. He's dead. Ugh. Not, not bad. <laughs> well, I mean... The biome is in horrible shape. This is horrific, but not bad. After defeating Vegeta and Nappa, you get a Saiyan space pod. And that means you can go to Namek and planet Vegeta. And of course I went to Namek. You won't believe just how excited the people were to see me. Right, let me take on this guy for a second. Look at this, even he's no match for me. Where are they though? Where's Larry and Jerry? Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Breezy? Is that you? I see you still don't wear a shirt, my guy. Good to see you. And if it isn't Lazlo, the man himself. I see he still just kind of runs around a lot. Very cool. After the family reunion, I farmed some dinosaur meat. You won't believe how many dinosaurs are just kind of vibing on Namek. It's the perfect place to get it. After all that fighting, I figured on day 16 I should probably upgrade my training method. And one of the best ways to do that is to get healing water, which you get from collecting the grass on Namek. Basically, you can think of it as liquid sensu beans. That's actually the best way to explain it. And then I found Freezer's ship. I never found it the first time I played Dragon Block C. But forget the ship, because the thing that I would see would change the timeline forever. I saw this door. It was like electric and it opened and it, it was the green liquid inside. That green liquid is the liquid that I'm basically trying to make to upgrade my training room. But dude, look at the door. You know what's painful about this door? Is that there's no crafting method for it in the game. So I couldn't even pick it up. That's, that's pain. On day 17, I finally finished making that healing water I was trying to make. And on day 18, I went out looking for lapis. But of course, I never found any lapis. Basically, the lapis was so that I could make some new clothes, but yeah, I never found any lapis. I did a lot of training on day 19 so that on day 20, I could unlock key fist, which trades in key for extra damage. And then on day 21, I got my first transformation. It's called Maximum Release, and you can think of it as Super Saiyan for Namekians, except you don't get a full release 2, 3, and you know, it's just one thing that you upgrade. And then I found a Dragon Ball on Namek. That was good. And then it was time to fight Freezer's army. Okay, there's a lot of them. Of course, my damage. They disappeared. What?
My damage is a little too much for them. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Dude, I'm way stronger than I was before. Oh, okay, guys. Okay. I'm just gonna eat the sensu bean just because I can. Wow. Wow. They really don't want a Namekian to kill them. Guys, is this... This isn't a fight. Come on. You got... Are you guys trying? Because there's a lot of you and there's like one of me. Okay, I'm gonna move away from the explosions because I can't see what's going on. Okay, so you probably noticed, besides the fact that I just clapped all these freezer soldiers, Namek went into nighttime, which isn't supposed to happen. Well, that's because of the shader. So every time it goes into nighttime, I'll just turn off the shader so we can stay intact to the source material, okay? And then my next fight was Kui and, well, you can guess the rest. What's up, Kui, my guy? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna lock onto you because I really want to finish you off with the max wave. All right, okay. I love doing this in, like, the shoulder view. Yeah, way stronger than before. And then Dodoria. Come on, man. let's go, my guy. Let's go. You want to just do this the punching way? Yeah, let's just punch. Go on. <laughs> He's dead. Dude. And then Zarbon. Alright, Zarbon's a little tougher. I mean, he's doing more damage to me, but... <laughs> yeah, okay. And then I fought the Ginyu Force, but... Something tells me I bit off a little bit more than I could chew. I probably should have went home and just trained for a little bit. Because, well, <laughs> I got my neck bent. Of course, I tried again on day 22. And then I won, but then because some of them despawned, I had to do it again. It turns out only Berta despawned, so I just really had to fight him. Alright, I'm targeted on Berta. Now if I just aggravate him... Okay, I'm kind of dying here. But it's like the saying goes, if you fight Berta on Namek, you'll probably die because of a panic. I did some training on day 23 and then, on day 24, rematch. I'm about to knock this man out. KO. KO. Uh, now the rest of them I just have to fight just for fun, really. My mission's finished. What's the matter? Am I moving too quick for you? Is my speed beyond anything you've ever seen? What about you, Captain Ginyu? Wanna taste some of this? So it was the end of Captain Ginyu. Man, these guys still do so much damage. Just not as much as me. Yep, I'm a bit stronger than you, bro. Just, yeah, just sleep. <laughs> I'm talking like this as though they're so easy and they were so easy before, but I came here with five sensu beans. I'm leaving here with one. So, yeah. Now, day 25 had to be a training day, because if you haven't picked up already, the next fight is Freezer. Yeah, this is when we can begin to panic. And then on day 26, it was time to fight. Well, Sensu Beans first. And then we fight. And just look at how quickly this man died. 
Uh, Frieza is dead. Frieza is dead. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then I had to fight more of his soldiers, which I think you guessed was really easy. Okay. Alright, I'll admit, their explosions are still kind of... Very explosive, but... Of course, I have the upper hand in this fight. There's no need to even panic. Look at this. <laughs> that wasn't a fight. But guess who's back? Freezer. And he brought his dad with him. Alright, Freezer's pretty strong. Freezer's pretty strong. I mean, he's strong, but look at his health now. What do you guys say? Maximum wave? I think so. Hey, Frieza. Go and... Go read a book or something, my guys. Ah! Dang it. Are you kidding me? It has a cooldown, so let's just... Frieza, just give it a second. Okay? Just give it a second. I'll defeat you in a second. Just... Hold up, look at his dad. His dad looks intimidating. <laughs> Let's try this again. Freezer. Go read a book. Dude, he did it again. Alright, I'm just gonna punch this guy. He did it again. He did it again. Oh boy! Okay. This is why I have an, an arena for this. Lock onto him. Target lock. Lock. Lock onto him. There we go. I wonder how much damage this is actually going to do to him. Not bad, but not the best. The key is to time the attacks and then go in for... Alright, his dad's kind of... Yeah, his dad, his dad is strong. His dad is strong. I'm actually as strong as him. Get, dude, get dookied. Okay, so I'll admit, I got a little excited and thought that I could just handle the androids right after fighting Frieza and his dad. I was, I was very wrong. I was very wrong. Because my neck was once again bent by 90 degrees. On day 27, I spawned the androids in so they could kill me so I could go to King Kai's world. But now there's a massive hole in my backyard. And then I set off on my journey on Snake Way. Wanna know how long Snake Way is? 16,093.44 kilometers. That's in the anime anyway, not like, I'm not, that's not how long it is in the game. That would take an eternity, but it's still pretty long. Now I left on day 27 to go on to Snake Way, right? Wanna know when I got there? On day 30, because I got distracted at some point and I ended up walking the wrong way. It's a long story, but that's why it took me so long to get there, but I eventually arrived. And then I learned Kaioken from King Kai, and that's really why I came there, so there was no need to stay. And before anyone says, dude, why don't you train on King Kai's world? You can't because of the safety zone feature, so you can't really spawn in any shadow dummies. I eventually got home at the end of day 31, and I tried out Kaioken, but you know what the problem is? Is that it just eats so much of your health that it's pretty much useless. So you basically can't even hold it for 5 seconds, and even if you do, your enemy will kill you in one punch. The next day, I really wanted to get Kaioken to work, so I trained so I could increase my health, but even that just didn't do it. So my only option was just to upgrade myself so much that Kaioken wasn't really needed anymore. Then, on day 33, I felt ready to face the androids for round 2. Kind of sucks that I couldn't use Kaioken, but it is what it is. And you know what, this time, I decided to start this fight right, by landing two maximum waves. The first one didn't really do too much damage, but the second one really chunked up his health. And then I was able to end the fight with some consecutive punches. Because Android 19 decided to despawn, I had to redo the fight and I still won. The first thing I did on day 34 was just farm some dinosaur meat so I could have some, you know, food to eat and then I spent the day mining looking for lapis and the lapis was so that I could make clothing that looks more like it's from Namek but of course I didn't find lapis for a while 
I did eventually find Lapis and then on day 35, I looked more like a Namekian. That was good. On day 36, I went over to Piccolo to get his training weight cape and even though it slowed me down, again, it was worth it. And then, I spent the rest of the day and day 37 working to create the Dragon Radar. Then on day 38, I spent the day looking for Dragon Balls on Namek. I never found any, but I spent day 39 to day 41 looking for diamonds so I could make a nether portal. I needed the nether portal so I could get quartz from the nether and then use that quartz to build a new and improved training room. And that's what I did on day 42. I spent the day collecting quartz so we could build the new training room. And then on day 43, I began construction. I eventually completed construction on the training room on day 45 and it was great. There was a gravity machine and a healing pod built right into the back. Okay, confession time. I might have had to go into creative mode to get both the doors for the healing pod and for the gravity machine because I don't know how to craft the gravity machine and you can't craft the electric doors. So listen, I've never used the gravity machine before. So cut me some slack. On day 46, I went to Goku to learn the spirit bomb and I found some dragon balls near his house, but I couldn't pick them up because they were in the safe zone or something like that. On day 47, I did some training because day 48, I had to fight Android 18. Okay, she does insane damage. Okay, but I do insane damage as well. Look at this. Dude, all that training has paid off so much. Did I even transform? I don't think I transformed. I think I'm in my my base form, if I'm not mistaken. Pretty sure I'm in my base form right now. Am I? Yep, I'm in my base form. I finished off that fight with a maximum wave, but then I had to fight Cell and that was tough. Okay, yeah, good thing I transformed for this one. And he's also teleporting to me, which doesn't help. What? He transformed and his health is full. I'm just gonna punch this man as much as I can. After I got my neck bent, I tried again on day 49. On day 49, we could say I tried. It only made sense that for day 50 and day 51, I dedicate that time to training to upgrade my key powers a little bit because I am an Amekian. And the next day, all that training seriously paid off. Like I was way above this man's power level. I was laying waste to sell. And I'm not gonna lie, his transformation kind of throws me off, okay? It kind of does, but you know what? I was still way above his power level. Dude had no chance. After beating Sol, there was really no time to celebrate. Like, really no time to celebrate. I, have to, I just had to jump straight into the training room because on day 53, I had to face the androids. And I thought, you know, since Android 16 and 17 aren't looking at me, maybe I can charge a spirit bomb while they're not looking. And I charged it. And I mean, I charged it really well. And look at this, it's just, he just brushes it off like it's nothing. And that spirit bomb seriously drained my key. So at that point, I was just like, I'll take the L and try again some other time because this was, this was insane. Do you see the, the size of the explosion? So of course I tried again on day 54. This time I decided to start by punching Android 17 because he just kind of, I don't know, he kind of stood there for a while. Look at him, I'm, I'm destroying this man. And then, I just had to finish off Android 16, and I'll tell you, he wasn't that tough. 
Not as tough as I remember, anyway. And then I decided to just finish him off with a special beam cannon. I don't know, it felt right. And look at the destruction that that fight left behind. But anyway, on day 55, I had to spend the day training because the next day, I would have to fight Cell again. And he was not going to be holding back. And you know what, I was right about him not holding back because not too long after, I got bodied by him. He destroyed me. And then I decided to spend the rest of the day just collecting dinosaur meat because, well, I needed some way to calm down. And then, in the evening, I was ready to fight him again. After placing some torches down, of course. The next day was just another dinosaur meat collecting day and then the next day after that I just had to fight a bunch of cell juniors and they weren't that tough. There was just a lot of them so they were kind of hard to hit. But I'm not gonna lie this felt more like a training session than a real fight. And then actual cell showed up so I had to fight him again. I wanted to finish him off with a maximum wave but he blocked it at the last second so I just, I just kind of punched him. Okay, so after defeating Sal, it was time to begin the Boo Saga. And first things first, we have to find Babidi. And I looked all day and all night. I couldn't, I could not find this man. And then just in the nick of time, there he was. His ship was right there. I jumped in and I don't think he was too happy that I just jumped into his ship. But anyway, I found him. And then Babidi sent some of his men to attack me. And one by one, I clapped each and every single one of them. And then I made a dumb mistake, I charged up a special beam cannon without looking at how much key I actually had left. So, yeah, I ended up dying, of course, but I ended up defeating each and every single one of them. And then, Dabura came around and, well, he was a significant jump from the rest of them. Guy defeated me in almost one punch. If I was gonna defeat Dabura, on day 60 I would need to do some serious training and some serious upgrading. And then on day 61, I defeated him. And then, Majin Buu. Okay, I'm not even gonna waste your time. I died, he destroyed me. It was now very clear that I needed some actual armor, so I got some armor on day 62 and then I decided it would be a waste not to spend the day training. And then day 63 was the same, more training. And then day 64, I decided to relax a little bit and look for some Dragon Balls and I ended up finding four. And then on day 65, I had to stock up on dinosaur meat. Keep in mind, all of this is to prepare to fight Majin Buu. I also found a Dragon Ball while I was on Namek, so that's a good thing. And then, more training on day 65. And then, day 66, I could try again. I just felt ready. Oh yeah, did I mention Majin Buu is like a nuclear bomb? So, cut me some slack. But then of course I... I died again. Majin Buu is... he is tough, man. But in the evening, I set my sights on beating him. Yeah, I was not gonna go to bed until Majin Buu was put to rest. This was an insane fight. This lasted the entire evening.
Okay, so thanks to the maximum wave, I won that round. But on day 67, Majin Buu was back even stronger. I even threw a spirit bomb at him and he just brushed it off like it was nothing. Not even a scratch. But let's not drag this any longer and just get to the point. I died in this fight. I got destroyed. But that inspired me. Because on day 68, I created my own version of the spirit bomb. I called it the final blast. And on day 69, I spent that day training. Trying to hone in my skills because I knew that I could take Majin Buu down. And on day 70, that's exactly what I did with the maximum wave. I knew better than anyone that Majin Buu was not done yet, so I spent day 71 training in the hyperbolic time chamber. And then on day 72, me and Majin Buu went toe to toe twice. Twice. And I was able to defeat him both times. Yeah, the second time took a bit longer, but still. I came out victorious in both these fights. And then day 73 was just kind of a dinosaur meat collecting day. And then on day 74, I felt so ready. I was so calm. I was like, I'm going to clap Majin Buu. <laughs> that was like one punch, one punch, or explosion, whatever it was. And then I tried again. This time it was really one punch. And day 75 was the same outcome. On day 76, I remembered something. Something that would set me apart from every other Namekian that has ever lived. If I wasn't already stronger than every Namekian, then this would definitely do it. So I spent the entire day training as hard as I could so that I could finally unlock divine energy. Or, like, Super Saiyan God form, but for Namekians? And on day 77, I, I really felt this new form. It was insane. I could tell that my power level was timesed by a thousand. And look at my red eyes. That looks nuts. And on day 78, I spent the day training to hone this energy. Same thing on day 79. And on day 80, I just went around looking for some dinosaur meat. And day 81? And then later in the day, look how close I got to finishing him off. He was dead. And then I just, I, I messed up. Now you see, here's the thing. I had forgotten how much training I had done to upgrade my key power that I didn't even realize how much damage the maximum wave could actually do now. All this time I was trying to punch them or use a TP barrage but the max wave was like a finishing move now. Yeah look how much damage the max wave does to him. I eat some food to replenish my key, wait for the max wave to charge up. Great thing is I don't even have to charge it like fully. Look, it's engulfing my body. Oh, okay. And then I fought Majin Buu again and the max wave just was not disappointing. I mean, look at how much damage it does to him. And after charging it up to its maximum, he had no hope. There was just no chance for Majin Buu. And then nuclear bomb Majin Buu was back in town, so I got, I got destroyed. But what happened on day 83 was just insane. You can see me charging up a maximum wave as much as I can. And I'm charging and I'm just charging this thing as much as possible. And then, right at the last second, I let go and it doesn't fire and I die. Now I was pretty disappointed here, but actually, the beam did fire. The only thing is, is that exactly at the same time, Majin Buu did his explosion thing. So we both died and I won the battle. On day 84, I tried looking for some Dragon Balls, but as you know, I found zero. That's just my luck. But day 85, I finally decided to unlock the defense penetration skill. And on day 86, I just spent the day gathering some dinosaur meat because day 87, 
the man I had been building up to fight this entire time, was now standing right in front of me. I'm talking about Beerus. And look, you can't expect to fight Beerus on your first day and your first try and expect to beat this man. There's just no chance. But after that loss, I decided to dedicate the next two days to nothing but training. And then the next day, I fought Beerus again. And let me tell you, all that training that I had done was really paying off right now. I was really destroying Beerus. In fact, I was able to finish him off with nothing more than a maximum wave. And then the next day, I was able to once again finish him off with a maximum wave. And then on that same day, I was able to defeat Whis with a maximum wave. I was really beginning to think the maximum wave was just unstoppable. Oh yeah, and remember the final blast? That special move that's kind of like a spirit bomb? Well, I tried to charge it to its maximum and use it on all of Freeza's goons, but it had zero effect. I had no clue why, so I just punched them. And then I fought Shisami, Tagoma, and then I fought Frieza himself, but surprisingly, I was able to deal with him with just two blasts of the maximum wave. And then, out came Golden Freezer, and the guy looks insane, especially with the shader on, but I was able to finish him off again with the maximum wave. Day 93 felt like a really good day to just collect some dinosaur meat, and then on day 94, I defeated Botamo. Frost. Magetta and both Kaba and Super Saiyan Kaba. And then I got destroyed by Hit. I mean, the guy was barely even trying. But on day 95, after a long and well fought battle, I was able to defeat Hit with a maximum wave. And then, it was time to fight Monaka, or Beerus pretending to be Monaka. Again, he went down with a maximum wave. Okay, so clearly I reached my goal here. I wanted to defeat Beerus and I did exactly that. So for the last few days, I decided to spend them looking for the Dragon Balls. And on day 99, I had collected all the regular Dragon Balls and the Namekian Dragon Balls. And then I decided to wish for the power pole. I don't know, I just felt like wishing for the power pole. And then now it was time for the Namekian Dragon Balls and well, they just don't work. I mean, my guy shows up, but you can't interact with him so you can't really get your wishes granted. Then on day 100, I just decided to spend the last day fishing. And that was it. My 100 days as a Namekian. Thank you so much for watching this video. And listen, if you did enjoy it, I just want to remind you to hit the subscribe button and on your way down, leave a like. We're getting closer and closer to that 100,000 goal. And listen, if you did watch the video this far and you haven't subscribed or even left a like, it's just a quick reminder. Again, thank you so much for watching the video. Remember to stay hopeful. I'll see you in the next video. Until then.